Terminator armor was huge. It made a man into a walking tank, but what it added in protection, it lost in speed. Abaddon was skillful and could fight almost as fast as any other Astartes while clad in its thick plate. But almost wasn't good enough when life or death was at stake. Chunks of rubble spilled into the Parliament House as Abaddon battered his way back inside. The brutal high-shouldered shape of his Terminator armor wreathed in chalky plaster dust. As Abaddon smashed his way back inside, he passed beneath a sagging portico that supported a vast swath of sculptured marble statuary above. Loken struck out at one of the cracked pillars supporting the portico, the fluted support smashing apart under the power of the blow. The parliament filled with dust as the huge slabs above came down on Abaddon, the entire weight of the statuary collapsing on top of the first captain. Loken could hear Abaddon roaring in anger as the stonework thundered down in a flurry of rubble and destruction. He turned away from the avalanche of debris and fought his way through the billowing clouds of dust towards the centre of the parliament building. He saw Torgadon and Horus Aximond upon the central stage. Torgadon was on his knees, blood raining from his body and his limbs shattered. Aximand held his sword upraised ready to deliver the death blow. He saw what would happen next even as he screamed at his former brother to stay his hand. Even over the crash of rubble being displaced as Abaddon forced himself free of the collapsed statues, he heard Aksaman's words with a terrible clarity. I'm sorry, said Aksaman, and the sword slashed down against Torgadon's neck. Abaddon took the bloody sword from Aximan's hand with a smile. This killed Torgadon, and it seems only fitting that I use it to kill you. The first captain raised the sword and said, You had your chance, Loken. Think about that while you die. Loken met Abaddon's unforgiving gaze, seeing the madness that lurked behind his eyes like a mob of angry demons, and waited for death. But before the blow landed, the parliament building exploded as something vast and colossal, like a primal god of war bestriding the world smashed through the back wall. Loken had a fleeting glimpse of a monstrous iron foot, easily the width of the building itself crashing through the stone work and demolishing the building as it went. He looked up in time to see a mighty red god, towering and immense, striding through the remains of the coral city its battlements bristling with weapons and its mighty head twisted in a snarl of merciless anger. Rubble and debris cascaded from the roof as the Dias Araya smashed the parliament building in a splintered ruin of crushed rocks, and Loken smiled as the building collapsed around him. Tremendous impacts smashed the marble floor, and the noise of the building's destruction was like the sweetest music he had ever heard as he felt the world go black around him.